animals and bird ethologists had been doing what scientists are supposed to do, which is just to observe. And they had noticed that birds and animals use their right and their left hemispheres for different purposes. What is the main difference that one can see? It's to do with attention. And I can't emphasize enough how important that is. In fact, when I first knew about this, the penny didn't entirely drop as to how profound that, that idea is. So when you say attention, what do you mean by that? Well, th there is a problem of survival which depends on being able to do something that is very difficult. It's to be able to pay, pay attention to the world in two different ways at the same time. Right. And this is for, um, a, 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 as I say, a very good reason that, that, that uh, comes down to a matter of survival. If you imagine um, an animal needing to lock onto its prey, it's got to have its mind clearly set on one pursuit, one target, and when it finds it, its attention has got to be very precisely focused on that. Or you could think of a bird trying to pick up a, a seed against a background of grit or gravel. It's got to have very narrowly focused attention to that. And the same thing goes if it's trying to pick up a twig to build a nest. So in order to do the basics, which involve some manipulation of the environment, get food, build shelter, you need very narrowly focused, but very sharply focused attention. The trouble with that is that if that's all you're doing while you're getting your lunch, you become somebody <laughs> else's right. because, because you've got to have at one and the same time yeah. the complete opposite of this, an uncommitted attention as to what you may find. It might be an enemy. It might be your mate. And you need to have it global and to be able to see the whole picture at the same time. So you have to have, on the one hand, fragmentary, piecemeal, very narrow beam, very sharply focused attention, and very diffuse, uh, large attention to the whole. And these, uh, the, the solution to how you do this is the bihemispheric brain. And uh, to cut a long story short, the left hemisphere is the one that offers this very detailed attention that enables you to manipulate, and the right hemisphere is the one that offers the broad vigilant attention that gives you the context, the understanding of the whole, helps you to understand what's going on around you and to relate to it. And this is just as true in humans as it is of any other creature. So, so some, some of the, th just, to, just to make this as practical and accessible as I can, mm. the interview, mm. some, some of the notes that I, I took from your book about mm. the left and the right was the, the left tends to be more fixed, the right towards, more towards flow. Um, the left takes thousands of points of information and tries to reach a conclusion about the whole picture that way. That's a, mm. obviously a shortcoming of the left. The left only sees what it expects to see. Uh, this, is, this is more depth here. The left hemisphere is not in touch with reality, but with its representation of reality, which turns out to be remarkably self-enclosed. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm just, just trying to get a very down to No, 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 I, I know, this. I know, but I'm also very keen not to be um, seen or said to be saying things that are simplistic, but there's some broad truth in, in, in all of those, as you stated them, and they flow from uh, two things, really, from the left hemisphere's ability to focus narrow attention and from its preoccupation with utility and survival. Yeah. And um, I know I'm talking about the hemispheres as though they were people and they're not people, people often say that, but then you have to find a way of talking about them and the alternative is to talk about them as though they're machines. The trouble is machines can't pay attention. Machines can solve problems and so on, but attention is an aspect of consciousness and so it's no good thinking about it. You've got to think really more of... But we actually do react and respond like machines a lot of the time because we respond and unless, unless we have this awareness, uh, attention, then we're going to respond just like machines, aren't we? Well, you've we? made a good point, which is that the whole essence of being human is actually departing from um, a purely mechanical way of responding. So it's appropriate to think in terms of, it might be appropriate to think in terms of mechanism at a certain level of complexity. But when you get to looking at a whole human being, it isn't anymore. And the metaphor that you use, whether it's machine or animate being, uh, a person, depends on how you understand the hemispheres, really.
But but to 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 get back to what you were saying, if you if you um, if you are if you contrast these two type, types of attention, they will give rise to two kinds of a world. And this is because how we attend to something changes what it is we find there. So if I look at um, those tulips as a, uh, as, a, 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 as a painter, I will see one thing there. If I think of them as I would if I were a botanist, I see something else there. Mm. And um, there isn't one right way of thinking, but every kind of person, every person with their different values and different preoccupations, will see something slightly different there. But um, I- if you wanted some broad headlines, the right hemisphere tends to see the whole picture where the left sees pieces. The right hemisphere tends to sustain an idea over time and is therefore more able to understand flow, whereas the left hemisphere tends to see it as an infinite sum of, po- of points in a sort of digitalized way, yes. if you like. Um, which means it's not very good at understanding things that flow like music and time and indeed human beings, because human experience and the human body even are better thought of as things that flow. The the, the 19th century poet uh, Novalis said, we are embodied rivers, our bodies are are rivers that flow. And he was referring to the fact that although there's a form of me, there's nothing in my body now that was there, um, say, a couple of years ago. Everything has been replaced.